Hi, if you suffer with confusion, brain fog, depression, memory loss, anxiety, fatigue, loss of balance, numbness and tingling in your hands and feet, neuropathy, heart palpitations, loss of appetite, diarrhea, constipation, frequent bruising, you might have something known as B12 deficiency or even pernicious anemia. Well, that is a long list of some very common problems plaguing our health. It can serve as warning signs that you are deficient in this critical vitamin. I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and today not only are we talking about vitamin B12 deficiency uh, and B12 anemia, I'm also going to explain to you some of the causes behind this B12 anemia and its connection to MTHFR mutations. And finally, some of the tests needed to uncover the cause of your B12 deficiency. Now this is important because you can have normal B12 blood tests but still be terribly, terribly deficient. Be and because you've relied on a test that's not very accurate until the very la later stages of the deficiency. Now, like I said, the one thing that's important to understand is that with B12 deficiencies, understanding what the cause of the B12 deficiency can be a total game changer once you've identified the reason behind it. And that can sometimes require some investigation. Let's first start off with some of the things, the, the who, what, where, and why of B12, okay? So for starters, vitamin B12 is also known as cobalamin, and this is a water-soluble vitamin, and it's required for many reactions in your body. B12, along with other B vitamins, help support your adrenal glands, okay? And these are the glands that are your stress-handling glands. They help you deal with stress. B12 is needed for neurotransmitter function, and it's here that B12 plays an important and vital role in memory, focus, mood, concentration, and of course, emotional stability. B12 is also critical for heart health in that it can lower damaging homocysteine levels in the blood vessels, okay? Homocysteine is a marker for inflammation, and when you have high levels of homocysteine, we know that your brain is inflamed, and we know that the blood vessels leading to your heart are also inflamed, and that puts you at increased risk for heart attacks and strokes. You see, in order for your body to convert damaging homocysteine into methionine, you need to have B12. And if that wasn't enough, B12 is also needed to make red blood cells, which carry oxygen throughout the body and help repair and make DNA. So as you can see, B12 is a critical vitamin, and many people around the world have no idea that they are low in B12 or have what's called subclinical levels of B12, where their B12s are, are lower than what they should be, okay? Uh, lower than what a normal so-called uh, serum B12 level test would show. Now it's also important to understand that when we say B12, uh, that you realize that B12 has many, many different forms, okay? And the most common forms are hydroxycobalamin, cyanocobalamin, and then methylcobalamin, which is your methyl B12. Cyanocobalamin is really your cheap laboratory synthetic man-made chemical. And you're not going to find this in nature. Where you do find it, however, is you find it in a lot of medications, you find it in food companies that buy large amounts of, of, of cobalamin uh, to put it in our food sources, and uh, very often it's called enriching the food, okay? So they can get away with saying that B12 is in this food or it's been fortified or enriched uh, by putting in this cheap uh, version of, of cyano uh, cyanocobalamin. Now you're also gonna see cyanocobalamin in your lower grade big box supplements, supplements that you buy off the internet energy drinks, and of course, a lot of B12 shots that many people get. However, in our bodies, uh, if our bodies to use uh, this B12 uh, version, cyanocobalamin has to first get converted into methylcobalamin, and that's the version of B12 that you really wanna take if you have a B12 deficiency. Now, one of the major problems that we see today with people suffering from a variety of chronic health problems is a genetic mutation uh, of what's called the MTHFR gene, okay? Some researchers estimate that upwards of 50% of our population have at least one mutation of this MTHFR gene, okay? What this means is that those with mutations are less able to methylate B12 or convert B12, okay? Um, they're less able to convert cyanocobalamin into methylcobalamin, and that can create a lot of problems, okay? If you can't do this, uh, you can have all of those symptoms that, again, we talked about from the very beginning. So what exactly causes B12 deficiency? Well, it really comes down to a couple different things, three main things. Number one is you have to eat plenty of foods that contain vitamin B12. These are gonna be things like beef, lamb, poultry, shellfish, eggs, crab, lobster, and liver. Number two is your body has to be able to absorb the vitamin B12. And now this absorption of B12 is really dependent upon a special protein called intrinsic factor, okay? So you have to have good hydrochloric acid production um, in order to be able to absorb that B12, okay? If you don't, because perhaps you're on proton pump inhibitors, 
this is going to block your B12 absorption, okay? If you have to um, have proper methylation, this is where uh, MTHFR gene attaches a methyl group to B12, okay? I did a three or four part video series not that long ago, and if you watch that video series titled MTHFR, what it means in, in simple language, you'll understand a lot more about that MTHFR gene um, and how to test for it and what variants and uh, mutations you have to be concerned about. But beyond that, let me give you a list of, of some other possible causes of B12 deficiency that you really need to be aware of, okay? Vegan and vegetarian diets, okay? A common myth amongst vegetarians and vegans is that it's possible to get B12 from your plant sources, things like seaweed, uh, fermented soy, spirulina, brewer's yeast. Unfortunately, these plant foods do contain B12 analogs called cobamides, but these cobamides actually block the intake of actually true B12, okay? Autoimmune disorders, things like lupus and Graves, Hashimoto's disease, okay? These are autoimmune disorders of the thyroid gland. These can also play a part in B12 absorption and B12 deficiencies. Intestinal inflammation from Crohn's or celiac disease, that can compromise B12 absorption. Things like H. pylori, this is an infection of the gut, uh, very common in causing ulcers, duodenal ulcers, and also stomach cancers. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth can also cause it due to the malabsorption issues that SIBO causes. Um, you can see it in people with leaky gut. You can see it with people who drink too much alcohol. You can see it in uh, women who are on birth control pills, oral contraceptives. Again, these are all scenarios that compromise B12 absorption. Low stomach acid from prolonged use uh, of stomach acid reducing medications, things like Tums, things like Prevacid, Prilosec, you know, the, the kind of medications that you can now buy over the counter without a prescription. Pernicious anemia is another one, okay? We talked about this earlier, but just as a reminder, this is another autoimmune disease and where the immune system now attacks the red blood cell, it's also attacking that intrinsic factor. Uh, parietal cell destruction, okay? Your parietal cells produce hydrochloric acid and they produce intrinsic factor. So if your immune system is actually destroying these cells, you're not going to produce hydrochloric acid. And if you don't produce intrinsic factor, you can absorb the B12. So what you're gonna notice here is that many causes of B12 have a lot to do with autoimmune diseases. And if this is the case of your B12 deficiency, while taking B12 helps and can be critical um, to helping a lot of different symptoms, you really need to put your focus and your attention on addressing the cause of why your immune system is destroying those tissues. And this is where you're gonna to wanna to work with a doctor who really understands why it's important to look at the big picture and not just stop at looking at levels of B12, okay? Uh, so there you go. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it's given you an appreciation for the different causes of, of B12 deficiency, the different kinds of B12 that are out there, what to look for in different vitamins, why it's important to not just uh, stop at, at um, you know, taking B12, but stop for a moment and uncover why the deficiency exists in the first place. That's much more important. As you can probably see, many B12 deficiencies, are, again, are rooted in autoimmune disorders. And sometimes that B12 deficiency might be the first sign or an early warning sign that you are dealing with an autoimmune disease, okay? Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Check out our website, drhagmar.com. I've got about a thousand pages of, of videos, articles, recipes, and more for you to become educated about natural medicine. We do work with patients around the world, and so if you have questions uh, about working with us, you can visit our website and just drop us a line there. And remember, take care of your body. This is the only one you have, and it needs to last you a lifetime. Take care.